DeMar DeRozan is quite upset about the lack of loyalty. Here's what he had to say when he was shipped off to the San Antonio Spurs for Kawhi Leonard. Highly upset. He said, there, here it is. Be, be told one thing and the outcome another. Can't trust them. Ain't no loyalty in sports. Soon you'll understand. Don't disturb. All right. He was upset because not only had the Raptors been telling him all along he wasn't going to be traded, but about a week ago it was reported that they told him, met with him when these rumors began and said, you will not be traded. And then a couple of days later, he shipped out. You feel like this was not only a problem in Toronto, but just throughout sports. I, I definitely think that this is a major problem, Chris. Uh, let, let me back up a little bit here. When Kevin Durant left OKC for Golden State, okay? He left after spending eight years in OKC and all these guys on social media calling him a snake, and he left this team, and oh, that's so messed up. So here we are two years later, and as you just said, the Raptors have been gassing up DeRozan. Uh, I read a piece by Zach Lowe that said in December, the Raptors front office said, hey, we can build around you the way the Lakers built around Kobe, and we can do this, that, and the other. They tell him last week we're keeping him, and then they trade him. This is the one guy who's wanted to be in Toronto, Chris. Yeah. We saw Chris Bosh. Peace, I'm out. T-Mac. See you later. I mean, you go Vince on down Carter. the list. Antonio Daniels. So many guys didn't want to be there. DeMar DeRozan wanted to be there. He embraced it. He's the face of the franchise in Toronto. And, and now you're just going to do him dirty like that? I, I just think, Chris, we've got to stop hammering the athletes when they leave. The way people went after Kevin Durant. And we've got to stop, you know, defending these teams when they do something like this. Well, I mean, look, I think it's gutless to tell DeMar DeRozan, we're not trading you, and then a week later, you're gone. So your problem is that they told him he's not well, being tra- It's not Chris, that they traded him. No. And then let's go back. 2016, DeMar DeRozan hits the free agent market. Yeah. Okay? He didn't even take a, a meeting with another team. He said, I love Toronto. I want to be here. I've read reports he took a minor discount to help them fortify that bench. I, I mean, listen – you, you got to remember, athletes. Uh, we had J- James Harrison on here a minute ago. You got to do what's better for yourself. Look, that's why I, I totally agree in terms of uh, players taking their destiny in their own hands and understanding this is not a business. And when a player leaves the franchise, when LeBron James leaves Cleveland, when Kevin Durant leaves OKC or whatever, you can criticize them because you thought – they went and joined a stacked team or they, they, you know, they took the easy way out. That's fair game. But don't criticize them for having a so-called lack of loyalty. Because as you said, there is no loyalty. There never was loyalty on the part of the teams. The teams are looking at this as a business. I have had NBA players tell me in the past where their names were in trade rumors. They went to the general manager and the coach and said, hey, what is going on? Am I going to be traded? And they were promised, no, you're not being traded. I had a player tell me that – He asked them because of his house. He was like, do I need to put my house Uh, on the market? I've got a wife and kids. I need to start looking at schools in another city if I'm going to be traded. They assured him, don't worry. Don't put your house on the market. You're fine. And then within a few days, dude was gone. Can you you give me the conference this player played in? Come on, let's narrow it down. All right. (laughs) Dude was gone. And so there never has been loyalty. The owners have always viewed it as a business and the front office people. Now the players are viewing it as a business. Now LeBron James, what he did, one of his legacies beyond all the great things he's done on the court, One of his legacies will be that he really showed players how to take power into your own hands. Now, every player is not going to have the leverage that a LeBron James has, but he still showed them in free agency that you do have power. And even if you're willing to take a one-year deal, to take shorter deals, which gives you more leverage, that empowers the player. And that's what LeBron James did. So I, I am totally with you on let's no longer kill these players when they leave a franchise. Chris Paul leaving the Clippers. Don't give me nothing about loyalty. All right, if you want to kill him because he left Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan and they, they couldn't get it done with the Clippers, so he's going to join James Harden, that's fine. 
but do not kill him based on a so-called lack of loyalty. Yeah. What a, Blake Griffin, you just mentioned him. Uh, remember they raised his jersey to the go. Raptors right. <laughs> in the pitch to keep him? Hey, we got to keep Blake Griffin here. Well, Three you know months what? later, bye, see ya. Now, let me say Enjoy this. Detroit. I'm not mad at the Clippers for doing that. Or at the Raptors for trading DeRozan. Like you said, the problem is when you tell a player yeah. you're not getting traded and then you do yeah. it, you do it. Yeah. But it's a business. And maybe in December, they thought differently of DeMar DeRozan than they did in June or July. They saw him in the playoffs. As you said, 0 for 9 from 3. Oh. They saw him get benched in the fourth quarter, and the team actually played better. So I get it if things change. Just don't tell the dude, you're fine. We love you. We're not trading. Let, let me mention something about LeBron. This gets glossed over a lot. Uh, and here's how you need to look at LeBron leaving Cleveland the first time. Okay, so he takes them to the finals against the Spurs yep. way back with, like, no supporting cast. Yep. So then the next year they don't make the finals. And he's like, I need help, next guys. three years. Right. So they, he starts asking for help. The Cavs gave him, like, Mo Williams, Antoine Jameson, 30-something-year-old Shaq. And LeBron's looking around like, geez, the Celtics are they're adding Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen, and I'm getting these guys? LeBron was had every right to leave Cleveland for Miami. Now, it may not have looked good with the decision, you know, spectacle on TV, but hindsight tells me, I'm fine with LeBron leaving, just as I'm fine with Kevin Durant leaving OKC for Golden State. And I know the pushback is, Jason, come on, he went to a stacked team. I don't care. He was sick of playing in OKC with Russell Westbrook. He wanted to play in a system where his entire abilities, his entire skill set would be unlocked. And we've seen that. Best player in the finals. MVP in the finals two years in a row. Okay, Defensively, he's gotten better. He's a better passer than he was in OKC. I'm not going to hate on any more athletes who leave. Unless, of course, uh, Sam Darnold leaves the Jets in five years. (laughs) Then I will be crying and tearing him to straight. Just kidding, Sam. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.